Hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching Z Makes It Easy and welcome to a new video for design technology for timber specific content and today we have 7.4 which is strengthening timber and by the end of the lesson you should be able to describe 7.4.1 the forces and stresses and 7.4.2 which, which is like reinforcement or stiffening techniques so check out the pinned comment in the comment section for all the timestamps And we'll move on to 7.4.1 forces and stresses and we'll focus on compression, tension, shear, natural forces and pre-stressed construction beams. But compression is basically a squashing force like standing on something and it's basically the ability to withstand pushing forces like compressiveness. Tension is a pulling force like tugging, uh, like tugging on the ends of a rope and it's the ability to resist stretching or pulling forces like tensile. And shear is the force acting in opposite directions, like I say pushing one side up and another side down like a cutting action of a scissors. And it's basically the ability to resist sliding forces acting opposite of each other, like shear forces. So here's just a, like, visual, like a visual diagram to show you what different forces are. Then we have natural forces. And when a tree grows, branches grow out of it and when, when like wind blows on it, it can lean to one side due to like the wind direction. This doesn't matter for the tree, but when it is cut down and sawn into planks, the stress is released from the wood and it can bend and crack. And for pre-stressed construction beams, when a beam is loaded, it tries to bend and the bottom of it is like in tension like here. If you pre-stress the beam by putting the bottom real in tension, like you stretch it, when the beam is made, it will stretch less and when the beam is loaded. And this means that the beam will, be, will like bend less and it will be stronger. And it's mostly used in construction like with concrete and steel rods. Because concrete has good compression strength and bad tensile strength, and steel rods have a uh, good tensile strength but bad compression strength, they are both fitted together like pre-stressed so that they support each other. Then move on now to 7.4.2 reinforcement or stiffening techniques and we'll look into frame structure now. And a square or rectangle is a useful shape to make things from but it's not very strong. And a rectangle can be strengthened by putting a thin panel inside the frames or adding a diagonal uh, structure triangle across each of the corners or adding a short corner to corner to make like two triangles. Then we have suitable fabrication, assembly or construction process. So here's veneering. And as we know, veneering is a thin layer of wood which means that it can be more prone to damage and plywood is made out of layers of veneer glued in like 90 degrees. And nailing, nails come from in a range, like nail comes in a range of shapes and sizes depending on like what you want. And they are hammered into wood grain which pinches tight onto them so that they are hard to pull out. It is quirk and nails can be driven below the surface and covered, out, uh, like covered over to improve appearance. However, Holes may need to be drilled be uh, to prevent the wood from splitting. And screws, screws are useful for joining pieces of wood together. They create a tight fit to make a strong joint and they can be uh, like unscrewed and removed. Adhesive is like let's say PVA glue, PVA. PVA is a commonly used wood glue and it makes a strong joint in wood as long as the pieces are clamped tightly together when you, while like, the glue dries. And it is almost, almost impossible to disassemble a joint without destroying it when the PVA has set. And contact adhesive is good for sticking a flat piece of a different material onto wood. It is fast but there is no, there's like little or no opportunity to reposition the pieces and gives up a solvent fumes. So it's really quite um, a very thing that can stick really quickly. And here's a veneer and contact adhesive. Then we have lamination. Lamination is a process or technique of manufacturing a material in multiple layers so that the composite material achieves improved strength, stability, sound, insulation, appearance or other properties from the use of different materials. An example of laminated things include laminated seats, laminated paper and laminated books and many others. The properties of lamination uh, objects or things could be flexible and good elasticity or it bends, it's tough. It's, it's like durable and it's quite lightweight. And all of the laminated materials and components are more durable and have more stability to add on 
since it is in layers and it is able to bend, and overall it is to strengthen the material. Then we have use of braces and tie bars, and the brace is a bar added to a frame to strengthen it, and it's usually diagonal to make triangle shapes because triangles are one of the strongest materials, sorry the shapes, and steel is often used and resists lateral loads like wind and pressure. And tie bars are similar to braces, but it is a rod that is good in tension. And it's usually used at longitudinal joints, and steel is often used as well. And it holds the frame in shape and it, as it cannot stretch. Like here, bracing, and different brace and tie bars. And lastly, we have embedding composite materials. So what is a composite material? A composite material is defined as a material that is made of two or more different materials, combined to create a unique material with new characteristics different from the starting components. So to put it in shorter terms, two or more materials combined to make a totally different material, which is called a composite material. So if you want to know the meaning of embedding composite material, just merge the two different definitions together, like embedding and composite material. So what do we use composite material for? It could be conventional structural materials such as concrete, steel, aluminum, and wood. And using composites rather than conventional materials such as steel usually provides a major weight savings. And the advantage of composite materials, they are lightweight, and as composites are light, light in weight, and compared to most wood and uh, like metals or materials. Their lightness is important in automobiles or, or like aircrafts, for example, where less weight means better fuel efficiency so that it can perform more like faster and more efficiently. And then what are the disadvantages? It could be that there's high cost as it is a relatively new material and like it's a delamination. Since composites are often constructed of different ply layers into a laminated structure, they can delaminate between layers where they are weaker. And so here's, uh, here are the different types of composites where you can have a look. And that's it for the 7.4 DT Timbers Timber specific content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it useful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and... Happy learning.